Foot Clan, we have a great episode for you today. Jason and I go head to head in a huge mock draft, and you get to decide who won. And we've got news to catch up on and a lot more. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, June 28th, the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore is here. I'm here. I'm ready to dominate. Our head-to-head mock draft on the table. Andy Holloway here. Mike is, uh, Mike's in Iceland. Yeah, that's, it's. That's far. far. It's far away. Yeah. Unless you are listening in Iceland. Well, no, it's still far away. Not if they're listening in Iceland. It's very close to them. You doing all right? You, yeah. you okay today? Yeah, I'm doing great. Um, <laughs> uh, Iceland is nice, and Greenland is covered in ice. That's a D2 Mighty Ducks quote. Which I don't know why Mike would want to go someplace that had the bad guys from D2, Kyle. It's terrible. They're evil. Yeah, I d- you know. <laughs> I wonder how people in Iceland felt about that and movie. I, I really hope people in Iceland aren't listening now that we've vilified them. Uh, well, the movie did that for us. That one movie set in in my mind that uh, people from Iceland were just tenacious on the on the hockey rink. I mean, they were very very good skaters. Uh, what are we talking about? We're going to do a mock draft show on today's uh, episode of the Fantasy Footballers, a head to head mock. Jason and myself, yeah, mono e mono. Perfect time for a maka laka ding dong episode. Maka laka ding dong. Thank you, uh, Andy. Yeah, we. Uh, We've been randomly assigned our draft slots, so I am six, you are eight, and it'll it'll be it'll be a good time. <laughs> uh, Brooks, how you doing today? Doing great. Good. Al, are you in the building? I'm here. Okay. All right. And Kyle, you already heard from him. Kyle is the resident Mighty Ducks kind of aficionado. You do have a what a spreadsheet where you've mapped out all the goals and scoring and efficiencies. I mean, it's a big deal. It's a real real live hockey event. Yeah, I mean, you just, they they need to make more of those. Kyle, over under five Mighty Ducks t-shirts that you have. I have over five, and I'm wearing one right now. Okay. That tells wow. You, that tells you where we're at. Uh, it tells you how old we are. T- <laughs> I know that. We have some giveaway items I want to announce. Uh, Mike is not here, but we do have Mike's horn. Uh, we have promised three winners for our uh, Scott Fishbowl giveaway. Three people that get the opportunity to play with us in the Scott Fishbowl tournament. Uh, anybody that bought the UDK before Sunday night uh, had a chance to win it. Those have been picked. And here you go. Luis Sanchez, Frederick Saparito, and John O'Hearn. I am so glad I didn't have to read any of those names. And I think you, I just want I to say, it. you did an excellent job. So congratulations. You have all been emailed. And so you should have information on how to uh, to hop in with us. That'll be a lot of fun. We also have a giveaway ending in two days, some classic autographed sports memorabilia, a Michael Vick signed jersey, an Odell Beckham signed jersey at footclangiveaway.com. It's free to enter there. Like I said, two days left. Lots going on, lots to talk about. Got a quick question to jump into. A reminder, you can check out the Ultimate Draft Kit if you want access to uh, a lot. Uh, I think the headline for a lot of people is the hundred plus player profile videos. That's what I hear on social media, how helpful it is to hear players broken down. Um, we go through all the main players that, that matter. Uh, we also have all of our projections. We have the draft analyzer coming out July 1st. You need to check that out at ultimate Here's the quick question, Jason. Do you ever draft the player with the intention of trading them after a hot start? So, not really, no. I, I think that whenever you're doing something like that, you're kind of outthinking yourself. However, 
Um, it's, it, it's not a hundred percent true that I never do that because what I do try is I try to aim for players that will get off to a hot start, knowing that if they get off to a hot start, I am happy to trade them. I, I talked about a couple years ago, the things to remember was that if you have one of those surprising wide receivers who are complete magma in the first month of the season, they started three of the four or all four of the weeks just as a top 10 guy that happens every year trade those players that worked to great success for me um in the past there's also players that you know like Marquise Hollywood Brown and Zach Ertz where you go okay they've got special opportunities to start the season because Hopkins is not there if Zach Ertz starts out and he's getting you know eight nine ten targets a game and he looks like a valuable tight end come week four, week five, yeah, there's an extra incentive that you'll be able to trade them before Hopkins comes back or uh, before schedules change. But I'm not, I'm not going into the draft saying I want to draft this player just to trade them. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you mentioned Hollywood Brown, and I have been thinking about this Cardinals offense in Kyler Murray. Are you? Would you put yourself in the camp where you are very excited about what Hollywood Brown will do? I was reading uh, some of the PFF metrics on Kyler Murray recently. He was the number one deep ball thrower, 20-plus yard throws with a 48.5% accuracy downfield. Um, he went 35 for 71, 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns on those throws. Um, you know, something that wasn't there for Hollywood the last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, I, I have been a Hollywood truther since before he was in the NFL, loved his college film, uh, touted him as a press prospect. He was a my guy. Um, and, and now I think the situation matches his skill set going to a spread offense like he ran in Oklahoma with his college quarterback. Oh. Mm. Yeah, so I, I am very excited about uh, Hollywood's prospect. That being said, you, you can't overdo it. I think people don't realize how many targets he already had last year as a Baltimore Raven, and people think, oh, he, you know, now that he's in a higher passing volume offense, he's going to go to the moon, and, and um, I do think the downfield targets will be more valuable coming from Kyler than they were from Lamar Jackson, but the total targets, it would be very surprising uh, to me if they if they go far north do you understand how emotionally difficult it is to trade a player after a hot start oh i do it's it's that's Cause, why because it's like you it's like a stock or something you know you can't how do you know the day that it's going to drop off and and if you make the trade and then it continues and i mean cooper cup is, is a good he, example he right the name i was going to bring up because you know uh, over the last couple of years i've i've looked at this you know first month of the wide receiver that starts super hot usually you can trade them to great success he would be the perfect example of someone that you failed if you traded him after week four th the good news is you probably got a haul and hopefully what you got back was good and good for the rest of the season but obviously if you traded him you lost because he was historically awesome but uh, we're looking for probability wins here where the majority of the time you're going to win and if a, if a wide receiver because all wide receivers are inconsistent has a strong opening month then that's probably going to be the best value point for them uh, on the course of the season news and notes from around the league another summer is here another gronk Retirement announcement. Um, so Gronk's retiring. He did it again. He's yeah. retired again. Um, and of course, uh, his agent came out and said, well, nah, I haven't talked to Gronk, but I'm sure if Brady calls him in the season, he might answer that call. Like uh, of, the agent very much wants him to play football and get paid more. If there was ever a player in which the retirement manipulation was a real thing like Gronk, you know, the famous story where they were going to trade him to the lions and he just said, Oh no, I'm going to retire. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't trade him. Uh, but for right now, there's going to be a reaction. The reaction is going to, uh, be bent towards Cameron Brait, who's on the roster as the tight end one. And then Kate Otten, the draft pick who has an opportunity to earn a role. The reality for this offense is that Chris Godwin may not be back until later in the season. And, 
So two tight end sets are a possibility for this offense. You know, Russell Gage, Mike Evans, Cameron Brait, and and somebody else on the field, very possible. Um, will Cameron Brait be somebody that's overdrafted? I mean, I tend to think he has an athletic ceiling that we've seen, and so therefore the statistical production may be kind of, you yeah, know. He might get an extra touchdown or two, uh, his role being more necessary to the offense. But, no, I mean, I, I statted the Tampa We've Bay seen Buccaneers. him without Gronk many times. Yeah, I, I, I statted him um, – the, the entire Tampa Bay Buccaneers without Gronkowski, and he was uh, still behind that wide receiver 22 number. So I'm uh, seven catches in five games without Gronk last year. So I think they are looking for somebody else. Yeah, and I, and that somebody else to start the season is probably Russell Gage. Russell Gage starting to look more and more and more attractive for a team that passes as much as they do. When you look at how that situation came about uh, with, you know, Brady and Gage wanting to work together and um, bringing him in, knowing the the Godwin situation, I mean, I mean, the targets will be there. Antonio Brown is gone. There is just so much need for uh, a possession receiver here. And, and, yeah, they throw the ball so much. I think Russell Gage – the problem is, you know, for fantasy, what's his ceiling? It's pretty high. You think? Yeah, but the, the way things are trending with Chris Godwin is that they may take a lot of time to get him back on the field. They want him to be able to block at full capacity the day he comes back on the field. And I've heard things like December, Jason. Really? Yeah, I like have, November, I have, December possibilities. Wow, I have missed that report. So let's just uh, let's just pretend that that would be the case, right? It turns into we know Godwin is back in late November. Doesn't that change things massively for Russell Gage? Uh, I think it changes things for a lot of players. Um, Tom Brady, Russell Gage. Uh, but the, the player who's going to be the, the winnest here. Um, winnest? Has, yeah, that's, a that's word, not a thing. That's a word my wife and I say often. Um, mm. And uh, the, the winnest here is Mike Evans. Uh, if, if that's the case where you've got a, a large chunk of the season without Godwin, Mike Evans can beat coverage that is trying to, you know, to take him out. He is very good. He's still 28 years old. He's always been great. And right now he's being drafted in the third round. If you're telling me that you get Mike Evans really as a, a true bona fide number one target, uh, you know, every single week for this offense in the third round, heck yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't have any problem with, with saying Mike Evans, but I think Mike Evans is – is not going to see a volume increase, really. I mean, that's just not been historically his situation. He's going to be a – I mean, he had the one year in year three where Winston went insane yeah. where he had 96 receptions, but he is – He had 173 targets. This Obviously, is year four with Brady or three? Uh, three? Three, right? So, yeah, I mean, I, I just think Russell Gage becomes an interesting value that people have not wanted to commit to due to Godwin's – ambiguous timeline but brown was good with godwin and evans there so it's not like he would go to nothing no he wouldn't go to nothing but I, obviously there is a large talent gap between antonio brown and russell gage antonio brown being the more talented if there was any sure question there uh the wall street journal's andrew beaton reports that the nfl will be pushing for an indefinite suspension that would last no shorter than one year for deshaun watson who has settled 20 of his 24 cases last I had checked. Yeah, uh, that case will be heard today and possibly tomorrow. And then um, after that, we don't know whether the judge will ask for more information or whether she will basically hand out her uh, ruling and then both sides can go and, and, you know, bemoan the ruling. The NFL side is asking for an indefinite, or at least rumored allegedly to be asking for indefinite no shorter than a year uh the Deshaun Watson side is arguing for nothing and that he did not violate the uh code of conduct and so we'll it, and there's the NFLPA that's involved so right um we should know very soon though yeah I think he's gonna I think he's gonna miss the year uh both of us in the ultimate draft kit if you've uh, got it and you've looked at our uh rankings you could see how players are moving and changing both of us have changed our Deshaun Watson games played this year to zero. 
and it'll be the Jacoby Brissett show, if that's the case, in Cleveland, which has ramifications for Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, David Bell, Nick Chubb. Kareem Hunt, every, yeah. everybody. Um, it's, it's not good for the majority of the offense. Alvin Kamara, it has been reported from pro football talk, Mike Florio saying that he is bracing Alvin Kamara for a suspension of at least six games. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, he had the altercation during the Pro Bowl. Um, I think it was the night of the Pro Bowl last year uh, in Las Vegas. So it, it's still TBD. This is – Mike Florio is both plugged in and the worst. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm hedging here. I'm not just guaranteeing that he misses six games. I'm going to uh, wait and see. Uh, I know you, you factor – I mean, we do have to factor in a suspension will likely come of some capacity, right? Mm -hmm. So you had factored in like maybe a four-game when I you're did, looking at – I did three games. Three games. Okay, I, I took the six. We'll see. Six – I was shocked to hear that number. But I did draft Mark Ingram with the very last pick of a recent best ball draft. And there's going to be some amount of games, again, where – Tony, Tony Brooks, James Jones Jr., baby – yeah, You're Mar back. It's, it's Mark Ingram. <laughs> no, it's Mark Ingram. Mark uh, Ingram's going to be but like a couple games there. Absolutely, he'll he'll be a fine play. And and what's happening right now? If you're playing on underdog, you're doing best ball. You're getting a best ball mania. It's very interesting because right now Kamara's value is is dipped down as if it's a six game suspension. You can get him in the back of the third round. Um, which obviously, if if that comes through, well, then you probably didn't even want to draft him. But if it, you know, if all of a sudden the suspension is pushed into 2023 which you know they, they let the legal procedure uh go you can end up with a real value there so it's uh you just kind of got to call your shot and then right now uh Steelers quarterback rookie Kenny Pickett working exclusively with the third string offense in OTAs and minicamp I made so the switch to Trubisky I did I made the switch to Trubisky I know earlier in the offseason we had a splain yourself episode where I was very low on Deontay Johnson it was basically because of Kenny Pickett primarily that was the 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 predominant reason um I have changed it I'm sure people still think I'm too low on Deontay Johnson but I think he was my wide receiver 22 or so um, after the after the Trubisky switchover which I think he he finished right on the edge of the wide receiver run one category last year correct okay um. All right. I think that is it for the news. Let's take a quick break and we'll jump into the mock. All right. Well, you know, the time has come, Jason. And, um, you know, for the smackdown. Normally we are, I mean, we're pretty good friends, but, Not today. you know, every once in a while you get a head to head mock draft and, you know, it's time to put on the gloves. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Today we are taking part in a head-to-head -head mock draft, 12-team, half PPR league, one quarterback, two, uh, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, four bench. Jason was given the sixth spot in this draft. I was handed the eighth pick and um you know we'll be probably stealing picks from each other all draft long we will i i really don't enjoy i have found so far this year that i enjoy being closer <laughs> to the turn i like being <laughs> do you I, I feel like you might not like any of the spots no you i might I, like I, all of the man, spots or none of the spots i tell you what i hate fantasy football <laughs> it is it is brutal out there oh no I, I i like the first three spots and i like being closer to the turn this middle pick so i'm up at spot six here that is usually where i have to decide between a running back that is good very good but not elite necessarily not not an advantage over all other running backs um or to switch to wide receiver Yep, let's uh, let's kick it off. Jonathan Taylor went 101, Derrick Henry at 102, Christian McCaffrey at 103. Eckler at four, and Dalvin Cook at five. All the running backs off the board so far. And Jason, here you are, 106. You got that decision to make. Is it going to be Cooper Cup, or are you going to turn to a... So at, at running back here, um, with the Trubisky change, um, Najee Harris is my running back five right now. So he would be the running back I would take over Joe Mixon, over DeAndre Swift, 
um, uh, two players that I that I also really like. But again, I feel like you know Najee is a volume guy that is he's not going to be a top three running back. He's just going to be a very good running back this year. Um, same with Joe Mixon and probably the same with DeAndre Swift, whereas I truly believe that Cooper Cup will repeat as the number one wide receiver. So when, I, when I'm staring that down, I know that running back scarcity is legitimate and it's hard when you uh, don't get you know a couple of them in the first early rounds, but I want the elite talent when I have the chance to take elite talent, and I do, so I'm taking Cooper Cup. All right, so Cooper Cup. Jason's, and I hope that's who you wanted. Well, yeah, I would have taken him at 108. Yes, I would have. Uh, Jefferson goes next, and then I'm, I'm staring down a similar you know, kind of situation. I'm lower on Najee Harris. I know I'm coming back around in the second, uh, in the second here with running backs that I really like. Aaron Jones, likely to drop to me in the second round. Ezekiel Elliott, uh, somebody that I am uh, pretty bullish on. So... I think I'm going to take my shot at a premier wideout. I will go with Jamar Chase at 108. Um, Cup, Jefferson, Chase are kind of in in that upper tier. Mixon goes next. Najee at 110. Devontae Adams at 111. Travis Kelsey at 112. Jason, you have an expression of uh, disgust, surprise. What is it? Uh, no, it's 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 what I said earlier. I like being at you know the first three or the last three. If you were team ten here, I would have got Najee Harris, a player that I thought was good enough to look at you know at that sixth spot, and then he comes around in the second round and adds Stephon Diggs, uh, an elite wide receiver. That to me is better than these middle picks. Uh, you've got uh, Kelsey wrapping up the first round, like I said. DeAndre Swift at 201, Tyreek Hill at 202, Stephon Diggs at 203. Diggs would have been tempting for me going wide receiver, wide receiver if he got back around to the 205. He didn't. Uh, you've got Nick Chubb here at 204 who, look, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what to make of the quarterback situation in Cleveland. But more of the same is probably what you'll get from Chubb if it's Jacoby Brissett for the entire year, which is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, if Jacoby Brissett is the quarterback, Chubb is the offense. And so I, I actually think Nick Chubb is is a phenomenal pick um, for where he's going right now in drafts. Um, the worst that the offense looks – because Nick Chubb wasn't being – you know, it's oh, it's Deshaun Watson's team. We're not sure he's going to be splitting. He wasn't being drafted as a as a top top elite running back. And now, if, if the news gets worse for Cleveland, he might even drop in ADP from where he was. Um, this is actually decently high for where I've seen him going. But I do think he has a very good fantasy season. And Ezekiel Elliott is still on the board. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to trying to talk me into Zeke here. Just letting you know. Um, <laughs> What's difficult is this is that Alvin Kamara discussion we just had. I mean, Kamara, normally these players, that first round, you're seeing um, you're seeing them go up pick later because Kamara's in the mix for that first, you know, eight or nine picks. And now it's a gamble. It's a bet on how many games he's going to miss and what that means. If it's three games, like Jason said, look, he's a valuable pick here at 205. If it's a three game, would you agree with that, that he's a valuable pick? Yeah, if I know you're trying to manipulate no, me in the draft. It, it is but. really tough because I, I, I want the Foot Clan to get good information, but I really want to um, ruin your team as much as I can. Um, that is just the competitor in me. Yeah. But no, I, I, I think if it turns out to be a three-game suspension, if you knew it's three games or fewer, um, then this is a great spot for him. In the second round, I would I would take that for sure. <laughs> I, I, I would. The, the issue here is... <laughs> There's obviously, um, you know, Florio is reporting that they're bracing for a six game. And if it's a six game suspension, then that's not a good spot. in the I know. Round. I know it's tough. And then Mark Andrews is also sitting here uh, as a possibility. I think I'm going to go with the running back I feel most comfortable with at this spot, which is uh, it's not Alvin Kamara with the potential for a six game suspension. You know, it's not Javante with the committee right now. But it's Aaron Jones. So I think ah, you the son of a gun. Biggest, oh. Oh, that's wonderful news. Uh, the biggest beneficiary of the target absence, Devontae Adams being gone. I quit. Jamar Chase and Aaron. So of all the manipulation, yeah. I didn't know who you wanted me to take. I took the guy you wanted. What's funny is I had looked at this earlier when I knew I was at the sixth spot and decided I was going to go cup because I didn't want that running back. And I thought in the second round, Aaron, Aaron Jones, Jones will make it to me. Right. 
and he would have. Yeah. <laughs> except yeah, would've. you love Aaron Jones. I do. And you're a rap scallion. That's right. And I'm when you said it earlier, when like you were you were just describing. <laughs> when I was just going through a few options. When you were on your first pick, about to take Jamar Chase, and you said, "Oh, there's running backs. I'll get the second. And the first name you said was Aaron Jones. Oh, I'm sure I made a look on accident because I was like, <laughs> "No, that was my plan. I wanted Aaron Jones in the second. Well, I, I have Jamar Chase in the first, Aaron Jones in the second. But here, here's the gift that, that I gave you, Jason. I convinced Team 7, the team right after me, to go with a quarterback in the second round. So Josh Allen off the board at 206 after my Aaron Jones pick. You have Cooper Cup in the first, and you're on the clock in the second round with a, a decision to make. Yeah, it is. Is this uh, the Alvin Kamara? Um, Alvin Kamara is certainly in the running here. And if there's not another uh, great running back that I think, you know, it, right now I've statted out Alvin Kamara to miss three games. And um, while almost all running backs will miss, you know, two games or so, we stat them out for a full season. It's it's the easiest way to kind of uh, get a good per game uh, ranking. And so when I look, I am kind of sad to see because I – I'm not a huge believer in this, um, but Ezekiel Elliott would be my next highest running back with the three games missing. Then it would be Alvin Kamara. So I'm going to take Zeke here. I wish that I could trade you Zeke for Aaron Jones. I think he'll be more involved in the passing game, have a ton of touchdown upside, but um, you could do worse than Cooper Cup and Ezekiel Elliott to start, and that's how I'll begin. That one's tough because I don't think Zeke would have gotten back around to you but I think you would have felt a little more excited about getting him in the early third round or something Certainly. of that nature. Mark Andrews goes next, so that temptation. I, I wasn't sure if he'd be a temptation for you there. I would have gotten into if, that. But. If No, I love Mark Andrews at that spot. The 207, I will draft Mark Andrews almost every time that I took a running back to start. Um, but if I'm going to go wide receiver in the beginning and then no second round uh, running back, I feel – almost pot committed to change to a zero RB, and I don't like doing that in most of these formats. Well, after your Zeke pick went Andrews, Lamb, and then Alvin Kamara finally found his home at 210, which means that Team 3 ended up with McCaffrey and Kamara. So, it's dangerous. I mean, that is what... They might have no running backs. Yeah, exactly. And then Saquon goes next, Javante at 212. Let's D talk Saquon for a second. Okay. Have, you, have you seen the photographs? Have you seen? I uh, know. You no, have not his, seen them. Yeah, are they his quadriceps? No, no. It's full shirtless, oh. uh, hulking man right now. And and uh, see, it's the legs I need to see. Yeah, I want to I mean, know the, the legs, legs are the legs okay. Are looking good in that picture, man. Uh, it, it, Saquon is oh, so. I think I. I think I found the picture. Yeah, you you'll know when you see it. Um, reminiscent of those DK Metcalf pictures uh, from long ago. He looks in great shape. And the, it's, the headline of this article on Saquon with this picture says, Saquon trains to dominate the NFL. Okay. So, I, I mean, he's wait, the one. He's the guy that's going to Set your train sights on domination. But he is interesting to me because I have complete blinders on Saquon. I, I called him as a bust a couple of years ago and then doubled down last year. And I, I you got the blinders on. I haven't seen anything. I, it's kind of like a confirmation bias. Um, where I haven't seen him good on the field, but at the same time, there's he, opportunity. He's still very young. He's coming off of an injury now, fully recovered a year in addition. The opportunity, the depth chart is great. He is someone that I feel like I could be making a mistake on. I haven't drafted him anywhere on any best ball league, on any mock draft. I haven't, I don't even consider him. And I feel like that could be a massive mistake. Like he, he could he has the opportunity here to still dominate this year. It's just a matter of if he's healthy. Yeah, I mean, there there are a category of players like a Leonard Fournette who you know it's not likely they're going to surprise you at this spot in the draft where they go, but Saquon is in a category where he could surprise you. He could come out and with Brian Dable's offense and things retooled in the passing game, like he could be somebody that we look at and say, why did he fall to the end of the second round? Javante, Debo, Kyle Pitts at 302. Um, man, I have not taken Kyle Pitts or thought about taking Kyle Pitts in any mock drafts anywhere. He is constantly uh, the third tight end off the board. He is being drafted for the hopeful breakout. I do think it'll be difficult with Mariota, but the talent and skill is clearly there. Uh, Evans, Mike Evans there at 303. 
Leonard Fournette, his teammate at 304, and then Justin Herbert off the board. Jason, you are back on the clock. This is an easy pick for me because when you're in the middle of the third round, there are two running backs that I think are just completely mispriced. One is Leonard Fournette, who was just drafted. The other is James Conner. I think both of these guys, I just love them in the third round. They have been very valuable for fantasy. They are on great offensive rosters. Um, the touchdown upside for both guys is great. They don't even have to be that efficient because they are so clearly the lead dog. So I will take James Conner to go with Zeke and Cooper Cup. I'm off to just such a better start than you. <laughs> you what's frustrating is... In my head, when I saw that, you know, one of us was on the clock, in my head it was me. Oh. So I was already going through the motions of who I was going to pick. I had I had seen James Conner's name on the board there. Um, but the only name that I was toying with other than James Conner was David Montgomery, a player that I am a little bit higher on than the rest of the group here. So I will make that running back choice here and go with David Montgomery. Montgomery. It is never going to be a sexy pick to take David Montgomery. That's true. <laughs> but the the volume and his production over time um, and the how much he is the center of this offense, I do have confidence that he is a, a stabilizer for your team. It's really interesting that we've gone back and forth with kind of taking the, the running back ahead of each other in, in each of those rounds because when I look at them together, like a trade, would you rather have Ezekiel Elliott and James Conner or Aaron Jones and David Montgomery? I think it's – it's it's super close. I, I actually would, I think, lean my side. I'm much more <laughs> bullish on James Conner. I love a long story that ends with you just saying you like your picks. Yeah, Those are my you. favorite stories. Uh, I, I have so many stories to tell you. Uh, <laughs> all right, we are going to continue. A.J. Brown went next. Patrick Mahomes off the board. Kittle off the board. Cam Akers, the uh, explosive and yet... Uh, Fearful selection of Cam Akers at the end of the third round. I mean, that's a good spot for him. You have a lot of upside there. Terry McLaurin, Deontay Johnson, darn Jason, you didn't get your chance to take him. Uh, Keenan Allen and DK Metcalf. So uh, a run of five wide receivers over that next eight picks after I took Montgomery. Uh, I am sitting here really not. I'm not going to go T. Higgins Yes, here. I know. I'm looking at the board, and I'm loving this because T. Higgins is the right pick, except you have Jamar Chase. Yeah, and I have – Come I on, have, Team 7, make a mistake. I have some picks, and I can't disclose them because you get two selections before it comes back to me, but I have a wide receiver, too, that I am pining for. In fact, I'm going to write it down on my little board here. Okay, and then show me. And then show you when it comes back around to me, and we'll see if he makes it back. So I'm going to go the running back route again. There's a, There's a name out here. Uh, that I think is actually going to have a stranglehold on the starting job for the majority of the season, and uh, it's Elijah Mitchell. So I'm going to take Elijah Mitchell at 405, um, a place where, look, it's it's if Elijah Mitchell's the starter, he's worth way more than the 405. I can it, it, I would say if he is healthy, then he's worth more than the 405. He he projects to be the starter, but obviously got injured several times last year and whatever they put in the water in San Francisco. I mean, nobody has been able to stay healthy around that team. So that's my worry with Elijah. I think we're going to do it. I think this is going to be the first time that San Francisco repeats with a running back one in the last six years, because I'm not going to sit here and just bank on injury. He looks uh, very healthy in camp. He has a stranglehold according to beat reporters on that job. So I'm going to bank on that right now to start this draft going Jones, Montgomery, Mitchell, running back, running back, running back. Brees Hall went next, and Jason, you are on the clock. And I will take T. Higgins. Uh, I am a huge believer in the talent. I think that both him and Jamar Chase could easily finish both as top 12 options. On average, every single year, there is a team that has two wide receivers in the top 12, and that would project to be you know, as, as likely to be the Bengals as anyone else. And, the, you know, big – Pick round difference between Jamar Chase first round, T. Higgins in the fourth. Uh, DJ Moore goes next. Waller, Lamar Jackson, Waddle, Dobbins, Amari Cooper, Etienne, Godwin in the fifth. Josh Jacobs almost fell back to you as an option in the fifth round. Um, kind of a, a pretty long drop for Josh Jacobs. Jerry Judy at 505. And Jason, you are back on the clock. Give me some of the names you're considering here because wide receivers, there's some. I know, you know, Cortland Sutton, you're in the Sutton camp. Uh, Michael Pittman still on the board here in the in the fifth round. 
Yeah, I mean, there are some great wide receivers. Michael Pittman, Cortland Sutton, and Marquise Hollywood Brown are the three that kind of come to mind. When I was picking Higgins, uh, Hollywood was the name that I was hoping would come back around to me. That being said, you know, Hollywood is is great, um, but Michael Pittman um, and Cortland Sutton are also very, very good options. So, I, I, you know, the fact that I've got James Conner makes me a little bit more hesitant to uh, draft Hollywood. And so I think I'm going to take the player that both Mike and myself believe is the number one wide receiver for Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. It's not Jerry Judy. It's Cortland Sutton. Um, with Cup, T. Higgins, and Cortland Sutton, I feel very, very solid at wide receiver. All right. So the player that I wanted to come back to me is the player I draft in every single draft right now just because of his um, – Oh, Mike Williams, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's Mike Williams. Mike Williams, the uh, best option, the highest fantasy output in Los Angeles for Justin Herbert. We've seen it. We'll see it again. He got the extension. Uh, I will say that I look at my wide receiver core, and I have, I have bought a lot of volatility with Jamar Chase and Mike Williams. I'm going to have some weeks where I'm not going to be beatable because of those two players, but uh, I'll be looking to stabilize the wide receiver room with a more consistent uh, body uh, later on. Yeah, when when I said, oh, Mike Williams, it's because I saw his name in the list. And we're doing this, you know, obviously live. We're making the analysis, and, and I'm not checking players off of my own. You know, I haven't printed off the UDK cheat sheet like I would do in a real draft. Um, and my highest-ranked wide receiver was not Cor Cortland Sutton. It was Mike Williams, who I would have drafted if I saw him. Oh. Yeah. So. Yeah, when you were reading names... I was so happy that you read not his name. I believe it because that was a great pick. Uh, Joe Burrow goes next, and Hollywood finally off the board along with teammate Kyler Murray. Michael Pittman at 512. What's your reaction to him dropping to 512? Is that, uh, yeah, it's a great value. In the, in the fifth round, I mean, this is a guy who last year was, was I believe, wide receiver 15. Um, and so you're talking about a guy whose floor – is the wide receiver 20? I mean, he is the clear-cut one here. I don't know how high his ceiling is. The we, we you know, we've got experience with Matt Ryan and the great Julio not necessarily connecting uh, around the end zone, which will be the real fantasy question mark for him, but I think that's a great value there. I, it was really tough for me between Cortland Sutton and him. All right, I have some wide receivers I love that are on the board here. But I'm not going to take one. I'm going to go with what I consider to be a tear break at the running back position. Oh, uh, going fourth running back. I am. I'm going to go with Miles Sanders here in the sixth round, the fifth pick of the sixth round. Beyond Miles Sanders are a bunch of names that I think are more ambiguous, the Chase Edmonds of the world. Um, you got Rashad Penny and Ken Walker mixed in there. It shocks me that, that uh, Ken Walker is somehow being drafted ahead of Rashad Penny. It that is. makes no sense whatsoever. The name at wide receiver I was really strongly considering was Brandon Cooks there. I find myself drafting him in a ton of drafts now, but I went Miles Sanders. Yeah, that makes sense. Brandon Cooks always undervalued. He went uh, the pick between ours, so he is not able to be picked by me. I probably would have gone Miles Sanders as I've got three wide receivers, two running backs. I'm looking at the tight end. I do think that Dalton Schultz is the last tight end left, maybe a Zach Ertz, um, that are okay in the middle rounds. You're going to call the doctor? But I'm not going to call the doctor oh, here. Come on. I, I, in the sixth round, there are still too many good running backs and wide receivers to grab. I, For me, it's either I get one of the top studs at tight end, or I am literally I am fine grabbing with my last pick a tight end because there's a handful of them that I like. You know the Irv Smith and Gerald Everett's and uh, Cole Komets that I like just as much as the you know the majority of tight ends. And I'm probably going to stream the position if I don't get one of those studs. Dalton Schultz is the sole exception, but he's not worth a sixth rounder. So I'm going to sit here um, and look at the running back position first. The guy that I have pined for, uh, spoken well of, is Kareem Hunt. Yeah, how do you who was not the take running back hunt? ten to uh, two years ago, and obviously that when he was was without Deshaun Watson. So I think that people are going to start falling more and more as the Deshaun Watson news looks negative for this year's outlook. But there will still be fantasy points here. I will take Kareem Hunt. I don't know if you were around the office when there were some rumors of Dearness Johnson being shipped out. I, I just don't know if you wanted to speak to directly to Kyle on that or. Um, Would you enjoy that very much if that were to happen? I just can't fathom a world where that happens. Those are their three running backs. They said that was a camp. There's a camp trade candidate 
I mean, it, Johnson. It makes sense because you don't need him at all, um, and he's a good running back. But they, uh, you know, they they paid him enough. Jason's roster right now: Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, Cortland Sutton at wide receiver, Ezekiel Elliott, James Conner, and Kareem Hunt at running back. My roster thus far, Jamar Chase, Mike Williams at wide receiver, Aaron Jones, David Montgomery, Elijah Mitchell, and Miles Sanders at running back. One of the things that uh, I think fantasy players, especially new ones, look, it's great to build that beautiful, picturesque, hang-it-on-a-wall starting lineup. It's so much fun. I love it. I love having that team that says, man, if these guys stay healthy all year long, this is beautiful, but they never do, ever. You will never go through a season where all your players stay healthy. That's one of the reasons I went into another running back position there. I felt like Miles Sanders was a tier above. I have about 10 wide receivers I have confidence in beyond Brandon Cooks. And so that's why I made that choice. Now, before you make your next pick, Jason, I am curious. I don't know if we've ever done this, but I'm going to put Kyle on the spot here. Mid-draft, six picks in, both of us have a roster. Whose roster do you like more thus far? Mr. Borgignoni. I want to say not Kareem Hunt roster, yeah. but I'm going to say Jason's. It's more balanced. Okay. Yeah, okay. even with your Kareem Hunt. So I gave eight. a, a multi-sentence like kind of lecture on why depth at different positions matters, and you said Jason because it's more balanced through six rounds. Well, so he also doesn't because listen. you have absolutely no depth at wide receiver. Yeah. After your yet. depth yet. comment. Yet. Um, all right, so I am back on the clock here. Yeah, let me run it back real quick here. Sure. Allen Robinson, uh, Jalen Hurts off the board at 6.09. I, I figured you were waiting for him, Yep. which, uh, unfortunately, Dak Prescott went at 7.02, which is another name I would have been waiting for. Mooney off the board. Hopkins goes at 6.11. Hopkins is going to be so difficult because I'm going to want to take him. That's what I realized. Because of how far he's dropping in the name, my emotional response to seeing Hopkins this far down in the draft is – He's going to come back in six weeks, and then I can really enjoy DeAndre Hopkins. But that is a long time in fantasy football. Yeah, if this is a best ball league where you get all 17 weeks, so not like the best ball mania tournament where there is still playoffs, and you get all 17 weeks, then I like Hopkins, and you don't have to worry about a roster, a bench spot being taken up. But in a normal redraft league, I do Hopkins needs to be like ninth or tenth round for me to take him, and I still kind of don't want. I just don't want to have to have a clog on my roster for that long. That's that's half the season it's, when it comes to making really the playoffs. Hard. It's hard. Uh, we were in a situation with Michael Thomas what a year ago with or two years ago with the suspension and um, not knowing where to take him. You're back on the clock, Jason. No Cordero Patterson, no Thielen, no uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. They just went ahead of you. Yeah, this give me is, your considerations. So this is where I I really check. You know, I I needed Kareem Hunt. I like the pick, um, but in the seventh, I'm going to check and see if a Dalton Schultz or a Jalen Hurts is there. Both of those guys were just drafted. I would go to the tight end or the quarterback here at this point, but those would be the guys I would want. Um, I like Russell Wilson, but he's you know Tom Brady is a little too early to draft him. I'm going to continue to add the depth you just spoke of, and I'm going to add it with a great depth piece his roster's in balance now Kyle Rashad Penny four running backs three wide receivers Rashad Penny um if if you haven't watched his career basically any time that he has been given the ball more than 10 times in a game he has dominated for fantasy it unfortunately has been way way less than we would want for going into what is this his fourth year um it, he has the opportunity here to be the starter and to be a great fantasy asset. I don't need him to be with the way my roster is built, but the upside is tremendous. So I will add him to my stable. All right. I am going back to the wide receiver uh, well here with a player that is stepping into a 145 target absence on this offense. He drops, and I, dra I draft him everywhere. Rashad Bateman is my pick here in the middle of the seventh round. Love that pick. Uh, it's going to be Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman as the high-low offense for this Ravens uh, roster, and I, I think he's a very, very talented player. I was so excited. He got off to a bumpy start with injuries and then obviously Hollywood being there, but I'm excited for this season for Rashad Bateman. Traylon Burks, Dallas Goddard, Tony Pollard, Russell Wilson ending the seventh round. Uh, Drake London, Ayuk. Ayuk and... Tyler Lockett, no hot Lockett there for for Tyler with Geno Smith. Cole Lockett. Um, 
<laughs> I think I think he'll be fine with Baker. Uh oh yeah yeah some rumors about Baker ending up there. Did you see somebody sharing? Uh, like a, I don't know if it was real, but the Seahawks team shop had a had like a Baker jersey that I'm somebody had found. Sure, that wasn't real. It's probably fake. Uh, except for he's about to get traded there. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the Carolina's still a possibility. No one is still a possibility. But I do think he ends up in Seattle. And this is because the Seahawks just always find a way to get it done, and they're going to go from Russell Wilson to just getting a free Baker, who is not a bad quarterback like Drew Locke. I am going to take Tom Brady in the eighth round. This is the time to draft him. Russ went at 7-12. Brady... Uh, has been, you know, the last two years, just a, a dominant force at the quarterback position in fantasy and getting him in the eighth round. I am comfortable there. Regardless of the timeline, he is going to throw the ball a lot. Um, I'm hoping that Trey Lance gets back to me in the ninth round. That will be my pick automatically, but <laughs> I have an even more automatic pick. This is the eighth round. This is my wide receiver four. I don't need him. But I get all the upside of my man, Gabriel Davis, the <laughs> right. angel himself. Uh, Gabe Davis. Oh, the angel. Oh, okay. Yeah, the angel all Gabriel. Right. Try yeah. that one on for size. I just did. I'm, you, know, you liked it. I, you liked it a lot. <laughs> uh, Devontae Smith, Hunter Renfro, Elijah Moore, Devin Singletary, Aaron Rodgers finishing the eighth round. Olave, Gordon. Uh, you've got Jameson Williams, Zach Ertz, Matthew Stafford, and then Jason Instatook. Trey Lance, who – Probably was not going to last one more pick. So uh, Derek Carr went right after Trey Lance. Three quarterbacks off the board ahead of my pick. Can Don't just mind that. Say how nice it is drafting from the sixth spot. Um, it's one of those that I look forward to uh, every time I get the middle of the, the draft because this draft has worked out swimmingly. Uh, I went with Robert Woods, who I almost took ahead of Brady in the eighth round. Robert Woods is going to be the number one target in Tennessee all season long. He's going to soak up the volume that A.J. Brown used to take, and uh, all signs point to a very healthy Robert Woods starting the season in Tennessee. Uh, Pat Fryermuth next, Watson off the board, Kasicki, Edmonds, Carter, Claypool, James Cook, and Christian Watson. There is just two picks left in this draft. I had some hope that maybe Zach Ertz would uh, make it back to me here. I obviously have to take a tight end with one of these last two picks. It's not going to be Rob Gronkowski. I'm not making that mistake again. Looking at some options at wide receiver, um, you have the kind of question mark of Kadarius Toney, Alan Lazard in the offense for – see, this is this is why I like the Miles Sanders pick is because I don't feel obligated to take a less than running back right. over the last three rounds just to check the depth box and draft a Ramondre Stevenson who will, you know, maybe Stevenson has a role this year that matters if injury happens, but I would have felt much more stuck. Instead, I can pivot. I'm going to take Russell Gage in the 10th round following up the Robert Woods pick. Russell Gage and Robert Woods really help. I mean, because your team started out with a lot of volatility, high-end wide receivers, but not a lot of depth behind them. To go into the 9th and 10th rounds and get – Robert Woods and Russell Gage, they fit your roster really, really well. And James I Ra don't like complimenting. No, them. I know, and it, I'm sure that hurt. Yeah, you it did. might be thrown up. Uh, James Robinson at 10.06. Jason, you have two picks left. You do need a tight end, and then Usual you've got a flexible spot. Usually I will wait for the very last round for my tight end, as I've said, because there's guys like Irv Smith that I like, Gerald Everett that I like that you can usually get with that last pick. But there is a tight end that I have been rising on recently. I actually think that he will finish as a tight end one. I have him statted there. And I'm I'm becoming a believer in Hunter Henry because I'm a Mac Jones truther. Uh, we talked about this at lunch today. Uh, Big Mac? Big Mac. I, I think he's a really good quarterback. He obviously had a nice end zone um, – you know, coordination with Hunter Henry. Hmm. Uh, last I've never year. heard it called that. <laughs> no, before. no, that's they that's coordinated. Yeah, they coordinated a lot. Like of, a color coordination, going to a wedding or something. Or? Yeah, it's like, what are you? Where, what where are, are you wearing? Where are you going to be standing? Oh. And then he's like, oh, I'll be, oh, I was going to throw it to that spot. So they coordinate that a lot. But I, I do think Mac Jones, the the not worried about Devonte Parker coming in and ruining some of that coordination. I am. What if he shows up in the same suit? I think that Devonte Parker is excellent for. 
The Patriots, will he take a touchdown away? Sure, he very well might. But I think Mac Jones takes a level up this year. His uh, The camp early buzz around him has been that he's just been awesome. Um, and, you know, a lot of times these quarterbacks go from year one to year two and they take a major level up. And nobody cares about Mac Jones because he doesn't run the ball. So for fa- for fantasy, for fantasy, nobody gives two farts about Mac Jones. But if Mac Jones has the ability um, to throw 30 touchdowns, you know, as, as he progresses in his career, which I think he does having a tight end like Hunter Henry, who was good last year. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to become bullish on Henry. All right. I was hoping maybe Cole Komet would come back around. Uh, he did not. Jason, you have one pick left. You can draft whatever you want. I sure can. You could take I a, sure uh, will. let's say the name at the exact same time. Okay. Sammy Watkins. Hmm. No, no, nope. I'm no actually shot gonna, on Sammy. No shot on Sammy. I'm going to take AJ Green. Uh, nope, definitely not. I'd rather be dead. <laughs> um, no, I'm going to go with uh, a guy who is another unsexy pick. Okay, he is a Robert. Wo- always has been a Robert Woods type because it's like uh, he's what's his real upside here? What about hold on before you make a pick? Okay, what about this guy? Uh, you're talking about the saxophone player, Kenny G. But the reality is, that's not how he sounds anymore. Uh, can I get the real Kenny G drop? Uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Yeah. He's not, <laughs> he's not worth the pick in the the last pick of the draft? Um, no, he, he could be for someone right, else. Who, who's the other I'm guy that you take, were looking at? I'm going to take Tyler Boyd. Uh, he's a good wide receiver. He's with a great quarterback. Gross. He's also in a situation where should, Gross. should T. Higgins uh, get injured, he's Gross. going to become incredibly important. Um, and so it's a great pick. <laughs> <laughs> Gross, Jason. Gross is taking a New York Giant not named Kadarius Tony. Uh, well, look, I, I think at this point in the draft, I've said it before, you're trying to select a player you can drop if they don't boom in week one. And so Tyler Boyd does not fit that mold to me because he's not going to boom. He's just going to do his thing. He know what he is. And you're going to drop him because you're going to see something sexy on the waiver wire. Um, I am for, do I have to draft the tight end? Is that a rule? I do, right? Mm-hmm. All right. That means no offense going to be my tight end here with my last pick. I think he's going to be very solid. Whether it's Geno Smith, Baker Mayfield, doesn't matter who it is. Uh, no offense is my last pick of the draft. So uh, we did it. Go ahead and read me your roster. So my final roster at quarterback is Trey Lance. Starting running backs are Ezekiel Elliott and James Conner. Got Cooper Cup and T. Higgins at wide receiver. Hunter Henry at tight end. Cortland Sutton in my flex. My bench is Kareem Hunt, Rashad Penny, Gabriel Davis, and Tyler Boyd. Oof, I love it. All right, my wide receivers, Jamar Chase, Rashad Bateman, Robert Woods, Russell Gage. My running backs, Aaron Jones, David Montgomery, Elijah Mitchell, and Miles Sanders. Uh, and then did I skip Mike Williams? I don't think I said his name. Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, Rashad Bateman, Robert Woods, Russell Gage. Quarterback Tom Brady, tight end Noah Fant. Spare no feelings, deucers, but I'm going to poll you. Your favorite team between the two of us, Mr. Al Borna. I'm going to go with Jason. Okay, Brooksy. I'm going with Andy. All right. Round seven through ten are what did it for me. And then Kyle, have you done Bate, Bateman? Okay, have you done the math yet, Kyle, on balance and figure out who you like most here? The math is simple. Jason took Trey Lance. Ooh, okay, good call. All right, yeah, that is some bad arithmetic. Um, we are done. You can weigh in on the comments. You can leave us a note on social media at the FF Ballers. If you want to watch the show and see the whole draft board and tell us where we screwed up, like, uh, you know, I know that's a national pastime. I, uh, I mean for you yeah uh youtube.com slash the fantasy football or subscribe click the bell that'll do it for today's episode oh and hey yeah foot clan yeah if you guys thanks for uh making it to the end of the show yeah congrats if you have not ever listened to the spitballers podcast uh two-time award winner for best comedy podcast of the year we have another podcast called the spitballers we just recorded our 200th episode it was very special um has some cool things at the end if you've never listened this is a perfect time to check it out. So download the Spitballers Comedy Podcast episode 200. Take a listen and get hooked. And and just so you, I mean, 200, that's a lot of episodes just objectively. 
But a, 200 episodes with Al Borland as the producer, do you know how difficult that is? It almost didn't happen because of him. Yeah, it, just to get through it. He's so bad. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.